Hello everyone, I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and today I'm joined by Paramjit from the Airfix Design Team. Thank you for coming. Cheers, thank you for having me. Well, I think uh, it's the other way around, he's had me. I'm mm -hmm. at the Airfix place. Um, so, I've had a response. I, I was in communication with Dale, who's your head of brand, mm -hmm. and he was, responded to my Spitfire video. So in the Spitfire video, some of you may remember, I did a comparison, and it was between the Spitfire Mark 5C, which is the normal tooling, and the starter set version. And in that video, I addressed why or what the differences are between the two kits. And Dale saw that and he sent me an email with a couple of answers really. But seeing as I'm at the Airfix Center, the best person to speak to would be the designer of the kit. So, Pranjit, would you be so kind to tell me why are there two? So the reason why there's two is because it goes back to actually the first one, which is the title. Yeah. So we've done the classic version, which is a more complicated one, and then the start set here. Right. We've done that out of one tool, which was basically one design. Even though they're two separate products, we've done it out of one tooling. Um, tried to do the same approach with the Spitfire. Yeah. However, it was getting too complicated, so it was actually easier to have them as two separate projects. Right. However, um, the way we've done it is I started the Spitfire starter set and then got to a point yes. where... I could use that CAD information on the more complicated one right? and then apply the more uh, better detail, mainly in the cockpit and obviously separating the parts into more manageable pieces. So, so you started with the more simple one yeah. and then you branched off simultaneously at the yeah. same time to make them yeah. the I, same. I mean, like, well, yeah. at the same time, but yeah. more complicated and more exactly. simple. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, it's quite a unique way we've done it. I don't think we've ever done that before. Um, so at a point where I was happy that the start set was going to be the start set in yeah. terms of the CAD, then I was like, okay, now that, uh, then finish that project mm -hmm. and then I'll take the information from the start set right. just so I'm not doing the detail and everything twice. Uh, yes. I mean, like you're reducing your workload by quite a bit by not doing that. And then you're basically taking that information and doing it in a complicated version mm -hmm. and then adding um, the more detail to it. So separate. A uh, nice detailed cockpit, yeah. separate wheels, um, separate propeller. I mean, like if you notice in the start, yeah, the yeah. propeller is molded on to the spinner. Yeah, that's is. it. Yeah. And then the exhaust stacks are molded onto the top It goes in, yeah, yeah, that's it. So those is the sort of stuff I'm doing separate because obviously as a more complicated kit, um, for some, a kit for the more enthusiast. More model, advanced, yeah. yeah more, you want to yeah. have those bits separate. I mean, like this is just to get you going and then... Get some experience and, exactly. and not being afraid to make mistakes. That's exactly. right. Um, but it's quite a nice stepping stone. Yes, it is. I mean, like, if you build that and you're like, oh, okay, I want to do a more complicated one, maybe you can do another one of this, and then, or you can maybe go on to that. So it's a good stepping stone. Right. Thank you. Uh, another point I raised in the que in the question, uh, which Dale responded to, was why do a 5C as, as both variants, why not do a 5B as, for example, the more advanced version and not do the 5C as the other one? So if you do... One of the, if you do, so let's just say this is a the start yeah. set is a 5B and then the more complicated mm -hmm. one is a 5C, you're always going to get people who come back the other way around saying, Why did you do it that way? Why not right. do it the other way? So you were never going to make everyone happy. Exactly. So if you focus on the main thing, and also from a research point of view, yeah. if you're using that same CAD information, because there are some dif differences between right. a 5B and 5C. So from a logical point of view, it makes more sense to stick with a 5C and then yeah. follow in with a 5C. So cost and time and manufacturer yeah. process and getting things on the shelf. Yeah. If you went down the 5B route, you're effectively creating two separate um, streams. Exactly. And it's a double doubling yeah. your workload, whereas this is getting two for the price of one. Effectively. Yeah. I mean, like technically, then you'll have to do. So let's just say this was a 5B and not a 5C. Then you'll have to do a 5C as a starter set and then a 5B as a more complicated one. So it just like makes it a bit too complicated in terms of logistics as well, and obviously design time. I think it makes more sense doing a 5C and then following on with a 5C, because it makes it um, a good stepping stone. So how come now then uh, you've got these brand new starter sets? So these ones say starter set on, but then this one over here, the Willis Jeep, uh, these ones say gift set. So what's the difference there? I think the gift set is a more, um, in-depth sort of thing. Uh, the starter set is literally for people who are beginners and I don't know, the starter sets are like aimed for the beginners but I also say it's good for like mojo builds as well. Yeah. I mean like if you're doing like a big build um, it's nice to do a quick one just to right. build your mojo up and just so you're not going crazy on your big project. So your starter sets are aimed at people who are you know this is your first 
uh, introduction to the range, effectively. Yeah. Whereas your gift sets are like a normal kit, maybe with a different paint scheme, but with paints and glues included. Yeah. So it's not designed to be a starter set per se, but a, a set for someone to get some extra stuff with their kit. Well, thank you very much, Pramjit, for joining me today. And if you guys have got any questions for him, make sure you leave them down in the comments, because I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll take a read after this one's gone live. So uh, thanks very much. Cheers, thank you. And I will see you again soon, Cheers. hopefully. Thank you, thanks. Whilst you're down in the comments, don't forget to uh, leave a like under the video and press that big red one if you want to see any more modeling content. And whilst I'm here, a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give my channel. A massive thank you to these guys on screen. Finally, last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one, and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.